But um, I did want to ask you, since it's out there now, and now I don't have to, you know, keep it to myself, no to it. Thoughts? So, there's a couple things out there that make this a positive. Okay. I saw someone comment on one of my videos that he's actually at Notre Dame graduation. He already graduated. He already did it. That was before OCA started, though. Yeah. He was celebrating with his family that night. <laughs> Extended celebration <laughs> over the degree. Yeah, it was like, yeah, that, that, that already happened, but all right. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. I just want to throw that out there. I thank you for yeah. letting me know that timeline doesn't really add up. Yeah, so. and, then, and then I know uh, apparently Tyson Alualu posted a pic well, yeah. yesterday and had everybody thinking he was out there. And it was like, nah, well, nah, not nah, that, nah, not oh, that, yeah. but no. Yeah. With him posting that, though, yeah. it makes you think Stefan mm-hmm. 2 is coming back because he said, yeah. Looking forward to what you're going to be mm-hmm. doing this year on the field. And then Cam Hayward said, yeah, yeah. Tua's out in Indy. He's working hard. I'm not yeah. worried about yeah, him. He'll be back. He's to be back. Yeah. So, yeah, a little disappointed that Tua's not there because mm-hmm. we haven't seen Tua in a Steeler jersey in yeah. how long. But those two things give me optimism. I think Tua will be yeah. back. I don't know why he's not there, though. I mean, it's still voluntary, technically. Mm-hmm. But I think he'll be back. Mika's there. TJ's there. Like I said, it's it's a little disappointing. Yeah. At the same time, I think Tua will be there. I think no. he's gonna be back. Yeah, I don't share that optimism. I told you that the other day when we were talking. Like even if he isn't the, there, even with the Cam Hayward Alabama thing, that doesn't change. Cam opinion said at all. it last year in season. Remember? Hey man, Tua's been out there jogging. I think you know he's gonna. We should be seeing him soon. He said that then. And I also remember, and this is to an extreme, but when El Bell was supposed to be coming back, everybody, oh yeah, man, he's gonna be back this week. Oh, he's coming back that time. He said, yeah, okay, so that worked out. Until I hear from that person, until I see that person show up, I don't put a lot of stock in that because at the end of the day, that's somebody speaking for someone else. That'd be like you saying, hey, yeah, man, most going to show up, man. No, nah, most mo, mo love recording. He's going to be here. He's going to be here. And I'm over here like, no, the heck I ain't. But you're like, y'all, man, I know mo, mo, most going to be there. Most going to be there. And I don't show up. It's like, yo, now you look crazy. To me, that's kind of how I feel with this, man. Until I see Tua show up, man, I'm not putting as much stock in it because I know what OTAs mean to the guys in Pittsburgh. I know this. You don't think Cam Hayward don't got stuff that he could be doing right now? Everybody that's out there, like, it, it hits differently. That's all. And with Deontay, it's different because we said, we know this is 100% contract related. And that's fine. That's, you know, the, the, the MO for guys that are trying to get money when they don't really have as much leverage. You don't show up to the voluntary stuff. So I anticipate him being there for mini camp because that's the mandatory portion. But with to it, I'm just kind of stuck because I'm like, man, it wasn't like you played last year. It wasn't like you played and got hurt last year. You weren't here at all last year. And I understand, you know, the, the tragedy of him losing his, his brother and things like that. And then the knee surgery, I get that. But the longer this thing goes and the longer I can see to see him not be there, it's hard for me to share optimism that, you know, he's definitely coming back. I'm going to be the happiest dude alive when he does come back. But until then, it's just kind of like I can't just like get hyped about somebody else saying something when I still have not heard it from him. The question is for both Deontay and Tua, it is when? Is I it think, the mandatory? No, because Deontay shows up for mandatory, definitely. Tua is the one I'm trying to see how that works out. Because why not now then? I guess that's the other question. No, no, no. The, the reason for Deontay, it makes sense, is this. They can't find you right now. They can find you for mandatory. So he doesn't have the contract just yet. If they do not give him the contract and he misses these three days, he'll probably be short 100000 Like, that's just, you know, where they can find you. It's like 30 days. It's 30 k per day. But if they want to, they can go more than that by hitting you individual meetings. Walk through. You weren't here. Weightlifting. You weren't here. They can go down that list and really make it a six-figure thing. For Deontay, you have to take that into account. So that's why. And I guess he doesn't care about as much of the benefits that we talked about at being at these voluntary OTAs, team building. Mm -hmm. If you get injured, they'll pay for. There was like three or four things. No, it definitely was. Yeah, maybe he just doesn't prioritize them. Yeah, but when you're talking about the mandatory portion, you got to show up for the mandatory portion. It's mandatory, like in your contracts by rules. So you want to be there for that type of stuff. And not saying that they would, but. If the team really wanted to play hardball, if he didn't show up to anything mandatory, you hit him with the conduct detrimental. Oh, well, man, there are players are having to answer questions about you not being here. Conduct detrimental essentially wipes out the cap that they could put on you for what they find you on a day to day basis. So the Steelers have a lot of bullets in their repertoire if they wanted to go that route. I don't anticipate them doing that. And that's why I do anticipate Deontay Johnson being there for the veteran minicamp at the end of uh, OTAs. 
with to it though the reason why i think it's a little bit different is because last year the way that everything played out for him and the the just the leniency that the team continues to show towards him i just feel like there's a situation where he might feel like you know what it's been going like this i haven't been having to show up i haven't been having to do this type of stuff whatever communication he's having with them maybe he continues that and just says you know what i don't want to show up for this either i don't know how it's going to play out but i just think that it's not as much of a guarantee that he will be there in contrast to Deontay, I think Deontay would definitely be there. I just don't think that to it, it's as, yo, he's going to be out. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if it's going to be that situation, man. Because he's not as much worried about the fines. All right. And he's already had the money, too. That's way different, man. There does have to be a hard line mm-hmm. at some point here. You would yeah. think it'd be mani- mandatory mini camp, but then if it's not that, I mean, it has to be training camp. I mean, man. people thought it has to But be. people thought it would be a hard line before the draft. Remember? It's like, yo, you, you need to know before the draft. So I need to know if I need to draft a guy in the first round or if I could take a guy in the fourth round. Didn't happen then. Oh, I need to know before free agency. Man, we might need to be aggressive and get one of these, you know, free agent D linemen out here. It's like, nah, they just continue to just, all right, well, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll talk to them. We'll figure it out. That's why for me, I'm just like, if they're not taking a hard stance, if they're not showing any urgency from what we've seen, now we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. So just throwing that out there as well. So they could be communicating with him behind the scenes that, hey, look, man, we need to know by X date. And if that's the case, we'll find out when we find out. But yeah, maybe there's some like contract stuff yeah, going on too. But Who based knows? on everything that we've been privy to in terms of the information, we just have not seen any type of urgency from the organization side to make to it have to make a decision or show up or say yay or nay about anything. So that's why it's kind of like we're all speculating on this thing. But that's why for me, I just don't put as much stock in Cam and Tyson saying that he'll be back because I think it's a lot of moving pieces with this thing and the way that they've been handling it. It doesn't make me feel like they're going to take a super hard stance if he does not show up. Mm. This is all weird because haven't there been some reports over the last month or so that he's actually been working out down the south side? Or I don't know where he'd be. Where, is it Heinz Field? It would be the south it, side. It'd just all be south side. <clears throat> it'd be the south side. Okay, I've heard some reports that he's mm-hmm. been working out down there like every day. I haven't seen him. Okay. That's just me. But he could be out there. And maybe he's out there earlier or later. Who knows? I mean, that's the thing. And shoot, I ran into a, a, a all-pro. It was an all-pro that doesn't play for the Steelers that was bumping show. He's around the way. So, you know, yeah. Big AD. <laughs> you know, say, hey, man, everybody work on where they work all that, man. Everybody work on where they work all that. What's yeah. He's allowed. <laughs> he's allowed. <laughs> I was like, oh, all right, big fella. I know. Hey, hey, now. All he's right. He's definitely allowed. Hey, tip of the cap. <laughs> Okay, I yeah. guess to it situation goes on. Yeah, continues. So, like I said, not as optimistic about it, but at the same time, we at least know we have another date that will be coming up because he could show, and this is the thing, he could show up to any OTA. It doesn't like just because he wasn't there, you know, at the beginning doesn't mean that he can't show up a week from now, two weeks from now. He still has time. That's the thing. So don't look at it or think of it as, hey, man, he didn't show up. That's it. He's not showing up to any of them. It's just he hasn't shown up. Thus far. So we'll see. You know, I mean, everyone's waiting on pins and needles for whenever that press conference or interview happens. Bro, to it. yes. Yes, that's going to be crazy. I mean, you got to talk. No one's heard from him over, what, a year now? Even longer? Probably is longer. Yeah, I mean, maybe a year and a half. Yeah. Almost two years. It's been a minute, man. Because I don't think he did any interviews during training camp mm. last year. No, nah, because that's when he first came back. And nah, I, I remember I was out there and we would just see him kind of walking. I'll tell you, I was like, physically he looked heavier, but he wasn't doing any on field. It was just on the sideline. I would say like him and TJ and stuff, they would do certain little like conditioning things and stuff like that. And then it wasn't even doing that anymore. So yeah, yeah, he definitely hasn't talked since then, at least. Yeah. Yeah, so whenever he yeah, does... this was OTAs well, before training camp, maybe. I, I, how will that work? Will the Steelers maybe protect him from that? So, I mean, they could. But um, I think it's one of them things, though, man. He's going to be one of those... Like, we'll probably do, like, the Missy Matthews interview with him. Yeah, so the way the way I anticipate them handling it is probably going to be similar to how they handled uh, Al when the National Anthem situation went on. So we knew he necessarily didn't want to do a ton of talking about it. He knew how sensitive it was. He knew how us in the locker room felt and just how everything played out. But because it was such crazy demand to hear from him, what they did, they ended up, 
uh, taking him right upstairs, having a little press conference where you got Bert, who's the uh, the still is like head PR guy, and they just made, basically like made sure it was certain things that he would say, certain things that you could not ask him, and he just kind of went through it with that. So I anticipate them probably taking a similar approach with to it because of the nature of number one, him losing a family member, then number two how long of a process has been i mean there are a ton of questions that people are going to have for him so i just think that they're going to probably take a similar approach whenever they do decide to allow him to be available to the media and quote unquote protect him so that way they don't like run him up because i shouldn't have to say this but you know how it goes some media people they're going to genuinely want to get good information ask some genuine questions and not try to piss him off for the sake of pissing him off Whereas you're going to have other guys that are going to do things that essentially try to see if you can get a rise out of somebody. It's a part of the game. We'll we say get it. Get yes, in trouble. absolutely. We know how it goes. I can't stand that element of the media part, but it is what it is. So I just think that the Steelers will probably try to protect him from that, though. So whenever we do hear from him, it will probably only be one time, too. Like, it won't be a reoccurring thing. It'll be, yo, this is your one time. Ask the questions you're going to ask. Yep, if we don't like that question, that's not getting asked. And they can kind of roll with that. Mm, makes sense. Yeah.